This was the aircraft that was considered the identity of Britain during World War II. The Super Marion Spitfire was an excellent fighter plane known for its speed and agility, making it a favorite among pilots and referred to by the public as the war-winning machine. But in reality, this plane suffered from a major issue. The problem was that the plane's engine would shut down exactly at the moment when it was dogfighting with German pilots, especially when it was diving downward. On the other hand, the German Luftwaffe's Messerschmitt Bf 109 fighter plane had no such issue. This is why German pilots would often dominate British pilots during the war. Britain won the Battle of Britain with great difficulty, and the biggest reason for that was the Spitfire engine issue. If Britain wanted a clear victory in the remainder of World War II, then solving this strange issue in the Spitfire was extremely necessary. They tried their best, even major engineering firms gave it a go, but no one could fix this Spitfire issue. Eventually, a solution was found, and it came from someone totally unexpected, a woman named Beatrice Schilling. What did she do with the Spitfire that today she is credited by the Allies for helping win World War II? Welcome once again to Mystery Hub's videos. Viewers, the issue with the Spitfire's Rolls-Royce Merlin engine first emerged in 1938. At the time, it wasn't considered a serious problem because, before World War II, pilots didn't do much diving. But in 1940, when the Battle of Britain was at its peak, this was no longer just a technical issue, it had become a matter of life and death. The even bigger problem was that, before World War II, the British government had already produced more than 20,000 Spitfires, all of which had the same problem because they all had the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine installed. And the seriousness of the matter became clear when the British realized that the Royal Air Force RAF, apart from the Spitfire, had other fighter planes, like the Hogger Hurricane and the Bolton Paul Defiant, which also used the same Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. So during the intense heat of World War II, the biggest ally of the Allies was forced to fight with planes having a defective engine. In 1940, during World War II, Nazi Germany was up against France and Britain. At that time, when the Germans brought their Messerschmitt 109s into Allied territory, the RAF would send out their Spitfires to counter them. To dodge each other's bullets, pilots used advanced maneuvers, such as sudden dives or climbing steeply. This was a very common practice during World War II. The planes would fight for hours using such maneuvers, sometimes diving down to avoid enemy fire, and other times pulling the nose up suddenly to bring the enemy in their sights and open fire. Now imagine, during this life and death dogfight, if someone's engine shuts down, what would they go through? Fortunately, during the Battle of Britain, British pilots had the home court advantage, meaning their fuel supply was nearby, and they could fight for hours. On the other hand, German pilots had to first cross the English Channel, then fight, and afterward return to their base for refueling. This was a disadvantage for the German pilots, which is probably why they couldn't even defeat the defective Spitfires. The Battle of Britain ended, but World War II was still ongoing. This strange issue in the Spitfire especially. When an aircraft goes into a rapid free fall or dive, anything that is not firmly fixed, such as the blood running through the pilot's body or the fuel in the engine's carburetor, is no longer affected by gravity, meaning instead of going downward, it moves upward. Unfortunately, in the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, the fuel outlets in the carburetor were placed at the bottom. So, when the aircraft performed a steep nose dive, the fuel inside the carburetor would move upward, away from the outlet. During this time, the engine wouldn't get any fuel, which caused the engine to either shut down or start jerking, and it would continue until the aircraft leveled again. To solve this issue, some of the best minds in the world were assigned this task. Cyril Lovesey from Rolls-Royce and Royal Aircraft Establishment, A.D. Fisher. Both came up with very clever technical solutions, but both completely failed. Worse, their solutions introduced a new problem in the aircraft. To understand this problem, one needed deep knowledge of how the engine worked internally. That's why it was quite surprising that in 1940, 
The final and best solution came from a woman whom we know today as Beatrice Schilling. Back in 1938, when the Spitfire's production test flights were happening for the first time, a woman named Beatrice Schilling rebuilt and tested her favorite machine, a 490cc modern motorcycle. This was the same bike she used to become the fastest woman to ride a motorcycle on the Brooklands racetrack. Schilling was an exceptional racer, but an even better engineer. She had a passion for motorcycles since childhood. Around 1919, when she was just 10 years old, she noticed her sisters going on cycle trips while she was always left behind. That's when she decided she would save money to buy a motorcycle. By the time she turned 14, she fulfilled her dream by buying a two-stroke Royal Enfield. Gradually, she began fixing issues with her bike herself, and soon she was capable of completely dismantling and rebuilding the bike. At 15, she decided that engineering would be her true career. But the problem was, it was still 1924, and at that time, society couldn't even imagine girls becoming engineers. With the help of the Women's Engineering Society, in October 1929, Beatrice enrolled in the Department of Electrical Engineering at Victoria University of Manchester, where no girl had ever enrolled before. Later, she also got the opportunity to take classes in thermodynamics and mechanical engineering, which was her true interest. She wasn't just an engineer, she was also the kind of woman who raced alongside men at the Brooklands track. And all of this became possible only because she had made some specific modifications to the carburetor of her 490cc Norton motorcycle, which gave it an extraordinarily high pickup. At that time, even Schilling herself didn't realize it, but her abilities were about to solve the biggest issue faced by Spitfire and Hurricane fighters during World War II before the war. Schilling had already spent three years working at the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Initially, her job was just writing technical documentation. But by November 1939, after several promotions, Beatrice Schilling had reached the position of technical officer, and now she was responsible for the research and development of the carburetor. When Rolls-Royce engineers failed to solve the Spitfire's issue, Schilling requested permission from the authorities to work on fixing it. At first, everyone underestimated her simply because she was a woman. But surprisingly, in just a few days, not only did she solve the problem, the authorities themselves laughed in disbelief when they saw her solution. So, what exactly did she do? Schilling simply designed a small brass restrictor with a hole of a specific diameter, and once the plate was fitted inside the carburetor, the aircraft's issue was largely resolved. The biggest advantage of this solution was that the brass plate could be fitted into the aircraft on the spot, meaning it wasn't time-consuming at all. Now the real challenge was to go to different bases and install the solution in the Spitfires. For that too, Schilling used her Norton bike and traveled to various air bases, installing this fix in both Spitfire and Hurricane fires. Her solution was so successful that it came to be known as Miss Schilling's orifice. This small plate didn't entirely fix the pilot's biggest problem, but it certainly reduced it significantly. Later, Schilling went on to design an entirely new carburetor for the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, permanently solving the issue once and for all. After the war was won, the pilots gave full credit to Schilling's ingenuity. In recognition of her contribution, she was honored with the Order of the British Empire, the OBE. After World War II, instead of leaving engineering, Schilling went on to work on new and advanced military projects. By 1950, her work had expanded to new fields such as rocketry, ramjets, and guided weapons. In 1955, Schilling was appointed as the Senior Principal Scientific Officer at the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Beatrice Schilling wasn't just a mechanic or an engineer. She was a timeless character who opened new doors for women in engineering. Even today, it is widely believed that if Schilling hadn't been there during World War II, the map of the world might not look the way it does today. We hope you enjoyed this episode from Mystery Hub. Don't forget to like and share the video, and we'll see you in the next amazing story.